We're back on the Vicky Gaddy Show, and we're here with the legendary Tyra, <laughs> one way. Hey, baby. <laughs> How are you? I'm pretty well. First of all, I didn't know I was sitting next to a girl that had six crowns under her belt. Oh, what? Jordan Tom, bring the beat back. It's really not that, you know, well, it's a great accolade to have those crowns, but um, with those crowns comes responsibilities. Mm -hmm. um, my first crown was in 2000, Miss Auntie Anne's uh, bar in Long Island. Mm -hmm. Then I went on to um, Miss Coliseum 2001. Um, we had issues, so I never um, lived out that reign. Mm -hmm. um, I, I never completed the reign. Then there was Miss Washington, D.C. Continental. Then there was Miss Black Gay International. It was a pageant thrown by a girl by the name of Tiffany LeClerc. Mm. And um, I have that crown. The pageant was never done again, so that crown still belongs to me. Um, so do you like have all your crowns like up somewhere in your home? Or? Yeah, they're all, they're all up with a few of my ball trophies. Those okay, that okay. remain, <laughs> you right. know? Um... Yeah. Oh, and Miss Esquilita, um, and Miss Esquilita, two thousand five, Continental, two thousand five, and um, I'm still Miss Esquilita, <laughs> Miss Esquilita after all these years. I don't know if they'll ever do the pageant again, but mm -hmm. you know. Okay. Well, so Whoa. I want to know. <laughs> I really want to know, Tyra, what made you leave Muglia? Because you was the mother. At one I was point. the mother of the New York City chapter. Okay. What year? Oh my gosh, um, was I like 2007, 8, somewhere around there? I'm, I really don't recall. But um, I did not feel like I was doing a good job as a mother. Mm -hmm. I had so many things going on in my life and trying to better myself that the type of mother that I wanted to be, mm -hmm. I could not be. Right. So I was trying to convey this to the powers to be. And they still wanted to, me to be a part of it. We still wanted to really, you know, get through it. But um, due to some miscommunication, um, some I was on my way to a ball. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't remember what ball it was, but I worked at Splash that night, and I was just in the moment, and something was saying, you know, you look good, go to the ball. Mm -hmm. And something happened, and I didn't end up going. And I got the, no, I got the phone call saying that. Um... Why did you leave Mugler? And I'm like, I did not leave. They're like, well, this other girl just walked as the, as the new m mother of the New York City chapter. What upset me was that no one, I found it strange, no one called me um, to tell me about it, and I had to find out that way. Mm. So um, at that, I spoke with David, and it really... I'm, it was a mix up. It was a misunderstanding, miscommunication. But at that point in time, it was my opportunity to say, I can bow out. And right. that, because I was, it was so much guilt, not making meetings, functions. It was, I, w I felt really bad. Mm. Now you're a $5,000 girl. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely are. But it seemed like, and this is for all y'all. Sorry, I'm going to keep it real. It's like the five thousand dollars goes after y'all win, y'all disappear, or y'all take a break, and I just feel like sometimes it's like, well, no share. You know, you got five thousand, you beat everybody. I mean, it's like, what else can you do? No, Did you feel no. like that, or like what happened after the five thousand? No, 000? no, no. Um, actually, I really wasn't walking a lot before the five thousand, mm -hmm. and I was working at the Bronx Community Pride Center with my daughter Sage. Mm -hmm. So Sage encouraged me, and we were walking together. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't claim that 5000 I claim it under my daughter Sage and I because she came up with the production. She okay. came up with, you know. Shout and, out to Sage. Yeah, and my baby's just so creative and so talented. So mm -hmm. I don't claim that 5000 For me, that was my daughter's and mine. Okay. Got you. <laughs> Made you choose a lawyer. Um, Shout out to the house of Alara. <laughs> <laughs> I Trophy. Actually, that was my first major house. Mm-hmm. Um, 
first the name, and then I met my, well, Shatira, I'm from Baltimore. Mm -hmm. I think she was a Revlon. She was my first mother. Mm -hmm. And um, I met Ariel Alon and Enrique. Ariel was Butch Queen and Drag's runway. Mm -hmm. She was so sophisticated. God bless her soul. She was so sophisticated. Um, tipsy. Mm -hmm. At times, <laughs> but um, don't we all get a little tipsy? Yeah, exactly, you know. But I'm just saying, I, I'm saying it because it was one of her qualities that I really admired. She could tip down the runway, tipsy, mm -hmm. you know, and okay. she was so effective, so creative, mm -hmm. and she instilled value in me, you know. Mm -hmm. She kept saying, "Look, I get up and I go to work every day. I do this every day. I do that. I have a life outside of you know the ballroom scene, and I adapted that. And Enrique being my father." You know, mm -hmm. Enrique Shout became my father, Enrique. and to this day, I still thank them for the guidance they gave me because I couldn't be here without meeting them. Mm. Yeah. Now, who deemed you legend? Um, because you know, I gotta ask you about the whole Janice and this legendary um, crap that's going on in the ballroom. I, first of all, I'm gonna ask you who de who deemed you. You know what? I don't even know. You don't know? <laughs> what? <laughs> I really don't. I was walking and then by the time I turned around it was like you're a legend I never see the whole legendary thing to me I never I didn't participate in balls to be a legend mm -hmm. I participated in balls to find an outlet you know have some fun enjoy myself a place where I felt family a sense of purpose because you know our families can be really hard mm -hmm. but um Let's see. Let me try and think. But I am so trying. <laughs> I'm so hard. <laughs> no, it's fine. If you know. Oh, but no. how do you feel about how they demon the girls now, legend so fast, or some people that's not, you know, that's legend that should be, you know, how do you feel about all that that's going on? Or do you even pay attention or care? No, um, I do care. Okay. And that's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm here okay. <clears throat> with you. A legend is someone that has time and time again, delivered something that has entertained the masses, mm -hmm. has done something that... So so when we're talking legendary, like Patti LaBelle, they have... She's a legendary singer. Yeah. Right. Right? Her songs, she's legendary for singing. Mm -hmm. But she's an icon because of the work that she has put into her community. Mm -hmm. You understand where I'm coming from? Mm -hmm. So today, I believe that People are deemed legends because they've just been walking a bunch of balls. Mm. Or they have friends because sometimes I look at, especially when it comes to Vogue Fam, I look at some of the kids and it's sloppy. It's a mess. There are no lines. There's no presentation. The clothes are dirty. The, it's, it's, it's no, there's no cleanliness. When Baby and um, when Eugene and... Dolce Shamal, even all those kids vote. It was clean. You know, mm -hmm. you're emulating femme queens. Right. And you, sh you should have some major trophies under your belt. Some mm -hmm. major moments. Mm -hmm. Moments that people will stop and talk about. Right. You know? Mm-hmm. That when, that you have created it so that now other people come by and they mimic your moves. They emulate you. You know? I don't see a lot of that going on. Right now. But I do hear a lot about le this. I just think they're deemed legend way too fast and they have lost the sense of what a legend is. But do you think, this is what I, I want to ask you, do you think that some of the older um, guys or, you know, still stuck in the past on how it used to be back in the day? Because, you know, times change. Right. So how right. it was back is more balls now. You can travel more. You know, it's kind of different, right? It's a think? lot different. It's very different. And I applaud the difference now because mm -hmm. it shows that we are growing. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to grow, grow. Don't get sloppy and tell me it's evolution. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's what I see a lot of. Okay? And... <sighs> I really don't want to offend anyone. No, keep going. But word, <laughs> I just, it's. <laughs> wow. The older people need to really take a seat and 
really evaluate themselves. The things that they say mm -hmm. and the way they carry themselves as role models. Because people are walking around here saying, I am legend, I am icon, but your actions are inexcusable, undesirable. You know, um, we are supposed to be the ones that are supposed to help guide the younger ones. And you're always going to have good and bad in every sect of society. But we need to now start taking account for ourselves and saying, look, this is messed up. Right. It's time to fix it. Instead of these legends on the computer, on Facebook, in these groups, it burns me to the ground when I hear a legend read or I see the text of legends, legends reading kids. Oh, I have this and I have that and I have the feeding into all this negativity. You're grown. You've been there. You right. know, a lot of these legends, I, I see the way they treat others and I don't approach them about it because I give them that respect. Because mm -hmm. I think that sometimes people think, oh, Tyra's too nice, or she's too this or too that. It's just a simple thing. If I don't feel that I can reach you, that's, it's, it's going to be, you know, legends and icons fighting, burning down hotels, um, fighting in front of their children, mm -hmm. enticing their children to fight. Coming in on reads to younger kids. Like, I mean, it's okay to critique someone's work mm -hmm. or their art because that's what we do. When you present your work out there, it's going to be critiqued. Right. But to sit there and take this person's self-esteem and totally trash it is absolutely horrible. Mm -hmm. And then you walk around and you say, I'm a legend, respect me. No. Uh-uh. No. Yeah. Next. <laughs> oh, the time they take to involve themselves in that negativity, they can improve their lives. Right. Do you feel like a butch queen should, you know, put his hands on a femme queen? And, you know, some people said if a femme queen attacks and keep on attacking a butch queen, he can, I guess, fight her back and slap her and do whatever. What's your intake on that? Like the whole butch queen and femme queen thing. First of all, if it gets to, if it's going to get to that point of violence, they both need help. <laughs> right. uh, it's just that serious. Because, first, I do not believe in violence. Right. I believe in every moment in time creates the future and can create history. I have seen where people have just started a fight and someone ended up dead. I've mm. been I've been abused myself by lovers by others <laughs> uh, now to the butch queen femme queen thing that's just hash dead right well moving right along Tyra are you in love I love my husband oh my god your husband yeah okay I do okay um legally <laughs> Do you see your face? <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> Yes, that. legally. Oh. We have been married now for um, two years legally. Okay, congrats. Well, for what? I mean, I mean, ain't you happy in love? And... Marriage is more of a business, sweetheart. Okay. You, um, love is something that has to be there from the get-go. If you can be married, if you can be in love without marriage, mm -hmm. then the marriage just um, solidifies it, validates it. I've been with my husband for 15 years past, um, this past, well, the 15th of January. Okay. 15 years. And I do love him. I love him a lot. I was deeply in love with him. Um, and there's a connection that we have that it it just far surpasses sex, and because mm -hmm. trust me, I don't. It's it's not my thing all the time, mm -hmm. um. But love is something that breeds understanding and knowledge and togetherness. So, I know we're gonna come back. 